Member statements. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Well, thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to speak about Cordelia Clark Julian, the esteemed chair of the Board of Trustees for Lake Ridge Health, who has been recognized as one of the 100 accomplished black Canadian women. Cordelia's recognition showcases her excellence in leadership, not only as our board chair, but also in her commitment to inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and anti-racism efforts within Lake Rochelle. Speaker, Cordelia's journey is not just an individual triumph. It reflects the collective support and mentorship she received along the way. Cynthia Davis, the Lake Bridge Health President and Chief Executive Officer, rightly describes this achievement as a tremendous accomplishment and a wonderful moment for Lake Bridge Health. Cordelia's dedication has played a pivotal role in helping Lake Bridge Health achieve its vision of one system, best health. As we look forward to the 2024 edition of the biannual book, which features all of the 100 honorees, let me quote Cordelia. My advice to black women would be to never diminish the light within you, as that is what makes you great. So when someone tells you that you're too much, just know that your light is shining bright and they just need to get a pair of sunglasses. Yeah. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you very much. This past Saturday, I attended the coldest night of the year in my community of Niagara Falls. The coldest night of the year is a fundraiser for Project Share, an organization that does incredible work in our community, supporting food security, housing help, and healthy living. And Saturday, they raised $65,000. But their job is getting harder and harder. We know we have a cost of living crisis across the province of Ontario. In Niagara, 20% or one in five households are, have food insecure. Over 75,000 individuals in Niagara experience food insecurity. When it comes to housing, a person earning minimum wage in the province of Ontario needs to work 81 hours to afford a two-bedroom room. We have several encampments throughout the region of Niagara experiencing homelessness. In this last fiscal year, Project Share served one, one in eight residents in Niagara Falls. As a province, we must do more to tackle the affordability crisis. We must get government back in the business of building affordable housing and bring back rent controls, which this government took out. We must increase social insurance, end the practice of deeming, and fund social services agencies appropriately. Finally, we must have the courage. We must have the courage to take, aim, take on corporate price gouging wherever we see fit. By taking action, we can make life more affordable for the residents of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Order. Member statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on Friday, March 8, I will be hosting my annual Carleton Women's Day breakfast once again in Richmond. International Women's Day is a global celebration of the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. Each year, this day serves as a powerful reminder of the progress made towards gender equality. It also serves to remind us of the work that still needs to be done. The theme for this year's International Women's Day is Inspire Inclusion. The campaign theme underscores the crucial role of inclusion in achieving gender equality. It calls for action to break down barriers, to challenge stereotypes, and to create environments where all women are valued and respected. Inspire Inclusion encourages everyone to recognize the unique perspectives and contributions of women from all walks of life, including those from marginalized communities. And I cannot forget, Mr. Speaker, to give a shout out to the Iranian women and the Iranian men supporting them who won the 2022 Heroes of the Year Award by Time magazine. Standing up for women's rights around the world has never been as important as it is today. That's why events on International Women's Day are so important, and I truly hope all members get a chance to host or participate in an International Women's Day event in their riding. In closing, I will share these poignant words delivered by Gloria Steinem, 
The story of women's struggle for equality belongs to no single feminist nor to any one organization, but to the collective efforts of all who care about human rights. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we say in, in Iran, Zan Zandigi Azadi, woman, life, freedom. Thanks. We're going to send out a communication about that. Thanks. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Niagara Centre. Workers scored a major victory when this government was forced to repeal Bill 124, which suppressed public sector workers' wages after the courts ruled that it violated charter rights. The courts stated because of the act, organized public sector workers, many of whom are women, racialized, and low-income earners, have lost the ability to negotiate for better compensation or even better working conditions that do not have a monetary value. Speaker, now with our public health care in crisis, Ontarians must live with the consequences of Bill 124. In Niagara, we've lost after-hour emergency surgical services at the Welland Hospital, reduced hours at the Port Coburn Fort Erie Urgent Care Centres. We have a shortage of beds, long wait times, frequent 911 crises in EMS, unacceptable offloading delays, and health care workers fleeing the sector. I've been meeting with frontline health care workers, including PSWs, and was shocked when some of them told me they were still fighting for their $3 an hour pandemic pay and pay equity. This despite huge pay increases for managers in the public sector. After wasting an untold amount of public dollars fighting frontline workers in court, it's time to start fixing the disaster Bill 124 created by ensuring health care workers are treated with dignity and receive fair, competitive compensation for their work. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm honoured to rise today to talk about a few amazing, outstanding individuals uh, from my community of Brampton East and Brampton in general. Uh, Speaker, I'm honoured to represent a community that's full of so much diverse talent. Time and time again, Bramptonians showcase remarkable contributions in arts, culture, and sport. Today, I would like to recognize the outstanding achievement of two great Bramptonians, uh, Zeta Ali and Tejan Buchanan. Uh, Zeta Ali is a, de a dedicated music teacher at Sunnyview Middle School in Brampton East and will be heading to the Juno Awards on March 29th as she's been, dom as she's been nominated for the Music Counts Teacher of the Year Award. I'd like to extend my heartfelt congratulations and best wishes to Zeta for her outstanding achievement and well-deserved recognition. Speaker, I would also like to recognize 24-year-old Tejan Buchanan. Tejan recently made history, becoming the first Canadian player signing with a Series A club, Inter Milan, in January. Wow. Tejan's journey, starting uh, soccer at the age of eight in Brampton to the international stage, serves as a great example of talent and success. Uh, Tejan and, uh, and Tejan, sorry, Zeta and Tejan are a great example of individuals who contribute their talents to make Brampton a hub of creativity, diversity, and excellence. Bramptonians continue to shine and impact the world, leaving a legacy of achievement and inspiration for generations to come. Once again, congratulations, Zeta and Tejan, on this well-deserved achievement. Good luck on all of your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Speaker. We recently hosted a town hall in our riding in the Chinatown area, and the top issue that came up was that people are losing their family doctor. If you are 75 years old and you don't have a family doctor, then your health could be at risk. We decided to investigate the problem. We did a review of the number of doctors in downtown Toronto who could provide service in Cantonese or Mandarin on the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario's website, and we discovered a very concerning fact. Of the 24 doctors operating in downtown Toronto, 80% of them have been practicing for 43 years or more, which means that they are nearing or are about to retire. And that is what we are hearing in our community. Five doctors uh, have just retired and that there are two more that are about to retire. And that means there are thousands of residents in Chinatown who have just lost their family doctor. This is not an issue that is unique to Chinatown. We know that 2.2 million Ontarians do not have access to a family doctor, and that number is expected to double in just two years. Our healthcare system depends on people having a primary care provider or a family doctor. Residents should not have to go to the emergency room at Toronto Western just to get a prescription for antibiotics because there is nowhere else for them to go. This is a message from Chinatown to Queen's Park. Fix the family doctor shortage in Chinatown and across Ontario by investing in primary care.
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Oxford. I rise today to speak to, the to share the story of Bob Hayward, an Oxford local and Canadian sports motorsports legend. Over 60 years ago, Bob and his boat in the Super Test 3 had a winning streak that's unmatched to this day. Bob was born and raised on his family chicken farm in Embro, becoming interested in drag racing as a teenager. His knowledge of racing engines led him to join the all-Canadian Super Test speedboat team in 1957 as their mechanic. They were determined to end the 39-year American domination of the Hamsworth Cup, an international speedboat competition. To do so, they needed the fastest speedboat around, so they built Miss Supertest 3. Wow. They also needed the best driver, so Bob was promoted to pilot. Wow. Together, they won the Hamsford Cup in 1959 and successfully defended the trophy for 1960-61. Unfortunately, Bob's life was tragically cut short. While piloting the older Miss Supertest 2 in a race, it flipped over at over 155 miles per hour. He was 33 years old. Bob and Miss Supertest have not been forgotten. He was inducted into the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame, and Canada Post issued a stamp honoring Bob and his boat. In celebration of Bob's achievement, the Thistle Theatre in his hometown of Embro is also putting on a play about his life and racing career next month. Bob was a quiet and humble man, Mr. Speaker. But it's safe to say that this Oxford underdog made a big impact in speedboat racing. Here, here. Thank you very much, member statements. The member for Ottawa, Vanier. Thank you, Speaker. Community organization play a crucial role in addressing social issues and inequalities. Whether it's offering food assistance, mental health support, education and rehabilitation programs or assistance to find housing, these organizations work tirelessly to uplift the most vulnerable members of society, addressing gaps in government services. The Vanier Community Services Centre, the Calax, Montfort Renaissance, Le Cap, Lower Town Community Resource Centre, St. Joe's Women's Centre, Centre Espoir Sophie, Gloucester Emergency Food Cupboard, all these organizations and many more play this important role in Ottawa Vanier. All of them, however, have described to me how the decreased funding they have seen over the last few years is threatening their very survival. Because of their deep roots in the community, these organizations are uniquely positioned to develop and implement tailored solutions to local challenges in an efficient and cost-effective manner. By providing adequate financial support to these organizations, the government can amplify their impact and achieve greater outcomes at a fraction of the cost. So I beg the government to provide the financial support required to keep these entities alive and thriving. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise in the House today to once again speak on behalf of the beautiful community of Etobicoke Lakeshore. Recently, I joined the Tibetan Canadian Cultural Centre in my riding to celebrate Lozar, the Year of the Wood Dragon. The Tibetan Canadian Culture Centre has played a key role in nourishing the community's rich heritage through initiatives promoting Tibetan language and performing arts. It brought great joy to spotlight their contribution during Lozar celebrations and reaffirm my commitment to supporting efforts to improve the lives of over 5,000 Tibetan Canadians who call Ontario home, many within the riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore. During Non-for-Profit Appreciation Week, it was an honour to recognize the work of Franklin Horner Community Centre, Wood Green, Franklin Horner Community Centre, the Jean Tweed Centre, and I cannot thank them enough for the workers and the volunteers for what they do every day to make our community stronger. I recently also had the opportunity to tour Holy Angels Catholic School with Minister Lecce, and I'm so happy to report the new school, which will accommodate 600 students with 88 childcare spaces, is near completion with an anticipated opening of September of this year. Congratulations. 
I have also some more great news that finally the Queensway Urgent Care Centre is opened, and I know many of my residents have been asking for this. And this expanded and renewed facility is open for service, providing expert care and comfort to many in the riding. It's a great time to live in South Etobicoke and the province of Ontario. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Chatham Kent Leamington. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. Speaker, we know communities across Ontario are experiencing challenges, challenges with our housing supply. Our government is taking bold, decisive action to build more housing faster and improve the quality of life for everyone. I'm so proud of my community for working together and demonstrating leadership, because Chatham Kent, just like our legendary MLB Hall of Famer Fergie Jenkins, literally hit it out of the park, exceeding housing target exceeding our housing target by 554 per cent last year. On Friday, I was honoured to be joined by Minister Rob Flack and Chatham Kent Mayor Darren Caniff to celebrate our 522 new housing starts last year, which unlocked $440,000 in funding through the Building Faster Fund. Our success is the direct result of the hard work and dedication of our home builders, trades professionals, realtors, and Chatham Kent municipal officials, who together are building a wide range of homes for families and individuals across Chatham Kent. And we're thrilled with our progress to date and excited for the future. I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to everyone involved, and a special thanks to the team at Maple City Homes for hosting us on Friday at their beautiful show home. Fortunately, Speaker, this is just the beginning, and I'm grateful to be part of a government who will continue to create the conditions for success in home building, business, industry, and agriculture. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.